The Bad Batch season one has come to an end and while there have been mixed reviews across the fandom, on the whole, I greatly enjoyed it and I already missed the Friday morning ritual. In my opinion, the Bad Batch season one is superior to the first season of every other animated Star Wars show that we've had so far. Admittedly, while there were a few episodes that were less plot driven than others, there was a lot to unpack in every single one of the 16 episodes that constituted the first season. In this episode, I want to talk about a new character who played a focal role in the first season Season of the show, and one who might be way more important than we think. I'm of course talking about Sid. This Trandoshan old woman is considered by some to be a rather annoying character, and a common grievance I've heard is that there were way too many Sid missions in season 1. While I will admit that there was a repetitiveness to the mercenary subplot, I don't think these missions were just thrown in as filler, they were deliberate. But in this video, I won't be focusing on Sid missions, but rather Sid herself. In my estimation, she's one of the most charismatic and intriguing characters of the entire show, outside of the Batch themselves. Beyond her conversational sass and brutal honesty, Sid has more profundity than the comic relief role that many people ascribe to her. While she was used as a plot device as a way of the Bad Batch to make a bit of money, there have been a lot of clues to her significance beyond the shallow level interpretation of the show. When we first met Sid in Episode 5 Rampage, it was because Echo said that he knew of her from his Jedi commanding officers. After all, Sid used to be an informant for the Jedi. We're going to come back to this later. On Ord Mantel, we were taken into Sid's parlor and then her office and immediately we knew that this woman meant serious business, quite literally. On her desk and walls, we see relics that harken back to the Clone Wars like the white Boba prototype helmet, Jango Fett's guns and the Phase 2 clone pilot helmet and there are other items as well. It's very clear that Sid is the mask Kanata of this show and I do not mean that in any bad way. What I'm trying to say is she has a past that is shrouded in experience mystery and adventure. She has connections to bounty hunters, mercenaries and other important contacts spread across the galaxy. It's this aspect of Sid that will be very significant going forward. The way I interpret it is that Sid is Lucasfilm's way of bridging the Bad Batch to other more familiar aspects of the Star Wars universe. In season 1 they perform missions for her and in season 2 if they continue to be mercenaries we might be taken to other familiar parts of the galaxy or maybe even run into more familiar characters. For all we know she might might even send the Bad Batch on a mission to rescue a child who is in a dangerous situation. In order to protect him, they then have to take him to a Nikto camp on Arvala 7, where Sid has allies. Anything is possible and I see her as a way of linking some of the key elements going forward. We've already had a couple of examples of this in season 1. Sid was the common denominator in reintroducing Bib Fortuna, Karelia, Raxus Segundus and of course the fact that she helped the Bad Batch identify who Fennec Shand was. I can definitely see one of these upcoming missions being very important for the overall Star Wars story. This is particularly true now that it's clear that Lucasfilm are connecting the Bad Batch directly to the Mandalorian and the expanded universe. Now that we know there's going to be a time jump between seasons 1 and 2 and go check out yesterday's news if you haven't heard this, Sid missions are going to have higher stakes and will be of much greater value. This is also true now that Sid has been firmly established as a reliable ally for the Bad Batch. I can see her role in the show's second season being of higher importance. Now at this point in the video we need to talk about Echo and how he knew of Sid in the first place. When the Bad Batch approached Orn Mantell, Echo said that while he didn't know who Sid was, he had heard of her from his Jedi commanding officers during the Clone Wars. Sid was a Jedi informant and my first question was, which of the Jedi did she know? Since we're dealing with Echo, the most likely candidates would have been Shark T, Anakin or Obi-Wan. Either way, her past as a Jedi informant was not thrown in as a coincidence. They're almost certainly going to do something with this going forward, because knowing that Sid has major connections to important figures across the galaxy, we must wonder what secrets she's been keeping from the Batch. After all, she often deliberately leaves out details and tells white lies. I also wonder if she played a larger role than a mere informant with the Jedi. And moreover, I'm curious curious about her former ties to the Republic and others she may have interacted with. This will also help to answer how she acquired Clone Wars relics and why she is so notorious overall. Now while I don't know if season 2 is going to address all of these, in season 1 Sid has been set up to be a valuable ally to the Batch, so without a doubt we will be getting more of her and more clues as to her backstory and her importance. Right now it seems that most people are focused on Wayland and the Mount Tantis ending that we got in the season finale, but we mustn't forget about Sid and other characters who will come back to play a vital role in the upcoming seasons. If Sid knew the Jedi and knowing that she resides on Ord Mantell, I wonder if she had run-ins with Qui-Gon 
Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan before the Phantom Menace. After all, Ord Mantell was the planet of interest in the 2000 Dark Horse comic, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, Last Stand on Ord Mantell. Five years before the events of Episode 1, Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi found themselves on the distant and lawless world of Ord Mantell. This was after a valuable cargo freighter failed to reach its destination on Coruscant. The Jedi were then sent deep into space to search for the missing ship and ended up on Ord Mantell. And it's said about the planet that everyone carries a grudge and a blaster, and the Jedi were less than welcome. If she did come across them back then, although obviously not mentioned in the comics which came out 22 years ago, a Qui-Gon Jinn name drop in the upcoming second season would make fans very happy. Now evidently The Bad Batch Season 2 comes out next year in 2022, when we also have the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and or and The Mandalorian Season 3. As for this year, even though Season 1 of The Bad Batch ended, we have The Mandalorian Season 2 Disney Gallery Luke Skywalker special, which comes out in four days. And then on the 22nd of September, we have Star Wars Visions. On November the 12th, we have a big promotional Disney Plus event. And then of course, in December, we have The Book of Boba Fett. So we really have so much to look forward to. Now, one final thing to mention about Sid is her species. Sid is a Trandoshan, and typically, these have been made out to have an aggressive reptilian edge. The Bad Batch, however, flipped her assumptions about Trandoshans on their head and gave us a more sophisticated member of their species. As I say, Sid is going to have an important role going forward and we shouldn't just write her off just yet. I've seen many fans dismiss her as a pointless character, but ultimately there's more to her than meets the eye. The missions that we've been taken on and the ones that we will probably go on in Season 2 are not useless and we just have to see what's in store next time. But now, my dear friends, I turn it over to you. What did you make of everything we spoke about in today's video. Did you enjoy it? If you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are. We are currently on the road for 100,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your amazing support. And also, if you're feeling generous and you get any sort of value out of my channel, please consider going over to Patreon. The link is down there in the description, but otherwise, my friends, I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.